Anthony, I have been very interested in life, in uh, the existence of God, whether this is uh, something real or the result of my environment. I've used science and philosophy and getting at everything. But um, when, I, when, when I step back, I, I try to put a, a, a way of thinking in terms of why I'm trying to believe. And whether it's in science or in politics or religion, I see belief systems and, and the way people believe all sorts of different things. Uh, and so if I try to analyze religion, perhaps it should be done in the context of how belief systems work in general. Maybe it's something generic as opposed to something specific for religion. No, I think that's, that's right. A, a belief system is indeed a system. That's the important part of it. Uh, it may be possible to you know, have a single propositional belief about one thing, but generally speaking, they tend to hang together in mm -hmm. a, a scheme. So you have a, a conceptual scheme which functions for the individual in a very interesting way. It's like a, it's, it's like a bubble around the individual, and, and the bubble consists of, of lenses which color and distort and shape mm -hmm. or, um, what's outside the bubble. So if you're inside a belief system, if you've adopted a belief system, it's going to make you see things systematically in terms of that system. Take a classic case, uh, somebody becomes a dedicated communist in the 1930s, everything is interpreted in, in terms of those, uh, the, those beliefs. Um, the same is true, of course, for science, except in the case of science, that there is this very, very important extra element, which is the, the, the self-correcting nature of the scientific community, the fact that other members of the scientific community community, very skeptical about what you claim <laughs> and want to replicate your tests. And there are these objective standards about uh, the results of experimentation, which do place a constraint. Of course, there's a great deal of psychological and personal investment in the outcomes of uh, scientific work. But generally speaking, there is this uh, external um, uh, control on the belief system, which in the case of a religion or a political outlook, isn't there. It's entirely a matter of what the, the community of believers have constructed for themselves and how, therefore, they see things. I have another life, which is working in China for the last uh, more than 20 years. Uh, start out in science and finance and business and media and political analysis. And if I look at precisely what you said, the communist China under Mao Zedong, which was very atheistic, built on Marxism, etc., I cannot differentiate it from every religion that I know, both in the worship of the, 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 the founder and the, the chairman uh, or the head of the church. I, I mean, there's no air that I can see between the communism under Mao and any strong fundamentalist religion. It's very striking to me, the attitude of the people. Uh, you know, that to me is very probative as far as the human psychology. Now, I think you're completely right about that. Uh, th there is no difference, really, uh, especially from the point of view of the individual caught up in the, the trammels of a belief system, required to believe it, having to be orthodox, uh, orthopractic as well as uh, orthodox in belief, um, b between a great religion and a great political outlook like uh, Mao Zedong thought. Absolutely mm. right. And what this shows us is, and of course, this is a, a you know a sort of negative comment on religion, really. Um, uh, you know a, a, about the. Why am I not surprised? <laughs> well, <laughs> because it, it disables people, makes them impotent from the point of view of being critical and skeptical about the belief system they mm. inhabit. They weren't allowed to in the case of communism. They weren't allowed to in the case of Torquemada's Spain when the Inquisition was in full force. So what it shows is they have this in common. They are all, whether they're a political ideology or a religious outlook, they are all monolithic ideologies which say they own the truth, they know the right way to live, everybody's got to sign up for them, and if they don't, there is a punishment, either in this life or in the next. If it's Mao Zedong's China, it's in this life. If it's Catholicism or something else, it's in the next life. Well, it might be in this life, too. Uh, uh, the interesting thing, the humorous thing in that case is that Mao Zedong's China was violently atheistic, and most fundamental religions are violently anti-communist. And so in this superficial belief, they claim to be very, very different. But in the underlying reality, they're virtually the same. Well, in the, just in those respects, they have this one thing in common, which is that they didn't want competitor ideologies. They didn't want some other monolithic ideology to come and displace uh, the, the, the great truth that they wanted people to sign up for. But they, you know, they, that sounds manipulative, but I think in the cases is that they really believed it themselves. 
Well, I'm sure they do. I'm sure they'd convinced themselves that they had the truth. And I mean, when you think that, you know, Voltaire said, you know, I'll defend anybody's quest for the truth and kill the man who claims to have it. <laughs> but but, but the, these great ideologies really do claim to have them. And so, yes, they are sincere in their desire to exclude the others. Um, but, but, but there is an important difference between them, which is, I think, that uh, in, in the case of um, the uh, Mao Zedong system, the atheism was, as it were, incidental. Yes. Because sure. it was on a par with any other monolithic ideology that might be a competitor to Mao Zedong thought. Whereas in the case of a theistic uh, ideology, it, the theism is the thing. It's the thing that has to be uh, protected and preserved. And if it were some other religion, it wouldn't be quite as bad as if it were some non-religion. So the, the reason why um, Catholics in Italy uh, were so hostile to communists in Italy, uh, more so than they were to Protestants in Italy, is because they made that distinction. Yeah, a actually, I, I've had experiences studying and looking at religions where, where, where the, I, I found the reverse phenomena, where religions that were very close to each other, you know, particularly when you had religions that split, where it would take an expert to figure out the doctrinal differences between the two, uh, they would come to almost blows and, and, and uh, mutual excommunications over the fineness of doctrine that would be hard to, to perceive from the outside. And certainly the history of, of Christianity shows great separations over the divinity of Jesus and how you exactly parse man and, and, uh, and, and divine. Uh, so sometimes when people are very close together in belief systems, that's where you even sense more uh, uh, protection of, the, of this uh, bubble. Um, again, I think you're right, but, the, but it's not inconsistent to say that uh, your anxiety about a competing ideology is uh, greater if it's a non-religious one than a competing religious one. Quite consistent to say that with saying that the, the worst, the most ferocious divisions are the ones between the closest people within yes. a religion. Right. I mean, after all, we know that Roman uh, Catholicism uh, and um, Orthodox Christianity differed in the Great Schism over the word and, <laughs> you know, the father and the son. Right? So that, and this huge division in yeah. human history resulted from something as petty as that. Um, and, and this is a recognized phenomenon. You know, the closer you are, the more bitter the yeah. disputes between you. But there is a different kind of dispute, I think, in this case. In this case, it's, you know, Christendom, uh, even with all its internal divisions, could conceive of itself of one thing, whereas uh, the communist world or the Muslim world or something that wasn't Christendom could be regarded as a, as a different kind of other than the other who disagreed with you doctrinally. There's a, an aphorism say, that says that the only people you hate are the people that are right next door to you. I think that's exactly right, and it explains a good deal. I mean, there, there are all sorts of stories, uh, uh, like, for example, in, in the British Parliament, a new MP sat with his colleagues on, on the government benches and said, uh, well, it's lovely to see the enemy on the other side there. And his neighbor said to him, they're not the enemy, they're the opposition. The enemy are all around you. And that <laughs> captures that thought.